Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. We are back with the newest episode of the Cinema Wave podcast, where we are covering the review of the movie Saturday Night, which encompasses the first ever live recording of Saturday Night Live in the 70s and sort of everything that happens leading up to that first live show. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darian Scalamoni. I am joined this time by Liz Seiko. Hello, hello. And Michael Peniston. Hey, everybody. So this is a movie that uh, it came kind of came out of nowhere. It, it was one of those things that a lot of the festivals were playing it. Um, I think they thought it was going to be a little bit more of a commercial hit. So far, it's completely tanked. It made it was like a twenty five million dollar budget. It's only made like three point five million. Came out this past weekend. I thought that they thought people would want to kind of rush out to see this experience, but still, unfortunately, some of these smaller movies aren't finding an audience. But Overall, um, we'll start with like non-spoiler stuff, just our broad thoughts of the film. I thought it was a fun time. I thought it was a really entertaining movie. Uh, it totally kept my attention. It's a movie that takes place basically in real time. So it's like the full 90 minutes before the first ever live recording of, or not recording, the first ever live episode of Saturday Night Live. Um, and you have all the famous people are there, all the portrayals you have lauren michaels you have gilda radner you have chevy chase dan Aykroyd. you even have like people like jim henson and george carlin showing up um actors playing them obviously but a lot of people of the era and people of the moment with all these portrayals kind of playing out on screen um so i guess liz my first question for you is what were your, were your overall thoughts on the movie but even more so so much of this movie is reliant on these characters coming to life based on these people that are so synonymous with the show and in people's minds still. So what did you think about the performances and your overall broad thoughts on the, on the movie? The overall broad thoughts is kind of the same thing as you. I had fun watching this. It is a great runtime. So, you know, I love that. Um, there's no lagging and it definitely gives you that feel of like the chaos that people associate with SNL putting on a new show every week. Um, I think that there was a missed opportunity for them to add some depth into the script. Um, there's not really any big meaning or uh, epiphany that you come out learning about the cast, learning about why SNL was essentially made at the end of the day, which I think could have just lifted up this script and this film a little bit more. Um, but overall, I mean... A part of me can't decide if I like the cast or if I actually liked the film because the cast is wild and there's just so many people in here. Um, and I mean, as an overall brush, I think the impersonations and um, portrayals of real actors and real people is pretty spot on from like what I can tell, uh, especially for the main like main few. Um, the big standout though, for me is definitely Corey Michael Smith, who plays Chevy Chase. I think, I think a lot of people are just blown away one by the resemblance resemblance already, but then also just the charisma that he brings and that the embodiment of a young Chevy Chase, um, he's able to do because I think some people would have made Chevy Chase just a completely egotistical, character and instead there is a little bit of vulnerability in him um which is nice to see uh so yeah i mean as an overall i think that it's also a young cast so there's some missed opportunity also to bring in that not written down essence of what makes these people um want to be a part of this i think that there's a lot of depth that could have been touched on more um but overall i had a good time it's not a boring film uh I just had a good time. Probably not a great time. Okay. Michael. Okay. Okay. Guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I had a really good time with this. <laughs> I did. I, um, I was, I was telling this before when we were inside. I, um, I had a really interesting theater experience. Um, I saw it at 10 o'clock at night and I was in a theater completely by myself. Whoa. And yes. And so, and I snuck in a burrito. It was just, oh my like, God. <laughs> it was just perfect. Um, but like i agree it's like off the rip like it's high tense it's just like very anxiety filled um i like that i i honestly really enjoyed like the speed of which it, it kept and it like it never really slowed down and it either stayed the same or got quicker um and i personally enjoyed that i felt like it matched what you would like you said what you, what you would think that would be um, I think the character portrayals for me were what really nailed this film. I like really liking this film. 
Um, but I kind of disagree with a few of what you guys oh, said. Yeah, okay. I do. I feel like there was a lot of foundation in this film. And I feel like it laid it laid how do I explain this? I feel like it laid the ground for a lot of future events that you might know with a lot of these characters mm -hmm. and it just sugarcoated it in there but it also did it in a way where it, it like spoke so loudly like i feel like and i don't want to like maybe i'll like wait till we get to the spoiler to like kind of get more into that mm -hmm. exactly what i mean but i i genuinely feel like this moment captured a lot i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep it at yeah that, i can uh, i can understand what you're saying because mm -hmm. i do think that Part of what it is, is it's hard. First of all, this is SNL as a show and an entity of itself is a large ensemble. Yeah. And the original cast, it's eight of them. Mm -hmm. And you have all eight portrayals kind of playing out on screen at the same time in a movie that they keep under two hours. So it's kind of crazy. And I like how you brought up. It feels like a pressure cooker at times. Mm -hmm. Like and I think um, John Baptiste, who also um, is in the film, he does the score. And I thought the score was great for this Same movie the style. constant ticking mm -hmm. and just it, it really energized the movie and i think the movie is obviously very vibrant um and i think sometimes it works to its benefit but other times i do agree with what liz is saying sometimes it's like you want to go a little bit deeper on the person mm. and um but i do also agree with what you're saying mikey and it's like did they decide they wanted it to be this way where it's like there's enough nuance in each of the portrayals that you can understand it's giving you a deeper glimpse of who each person was without basically um, making them feel like drawings of these people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's um, the one thing with Chevy in particular that I loved in the movie is the conversation he has with uh, the character that Tracy Letts plays the writer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when he's like, he's like, you've been here a long time. Like, what does this mean for me before the show even goes on air? And he gives him, like a, it's like a perfect monologue of just being like, this is exactly what you're going to turn into. And the ironic thing is, of course, that's exactly who Chevy Chase turned into. So there are moments like that that I think work really well. Um, and the other guy that played the head writer, uh, he played, I think it was like Michael O'Donoghue was the character's name. I got to find who exactly it was. But the guy who is giving these monologues towards the priest or the um, – the uh oh the fact checker lady. yeah the yeah. fact check and script uh yeah. approver yeah, yeah. and they have all these jokes uh these inappropriate jokes and he goes off on her and he goes off on carlin mm -hmm. and his character i just thought was so funny and it was great to have that that every man that we don't see like because everyone knows the chevy chases and the gildner radners and the jane curtains and the uh, garrett morrises but we don't know sort of the other people behind the scenes and even um cooper uh hoffman who does a really good job i think is dick ebersol is like mm -hmm. the i thought the performance is like you said and that's my also my conundrum with this movie is am i praising the movie for the performances or am i praising the movie for an overall package because i think in some elements it really works for the movie but other times it feels a little off i don't know how to explain it other than that mm -hmm. maybe i could contemplate it as we're talking about it but I don't know. That's how I feel about it. So for me, I guess we'll get into spoilers yeah, now into spoilers. at this point because um, it's going to be hard talking around it. Mm. Um, so I think the big thing that I was talking about with the depth is that we have this big ticking time bomb, as you say, and we keep getting reminded with like these time lapses of, OK, three minutes have gone by. Now they only have 50 more minutes and then we're hearing it in the music. But for me, that is the only real um I guess stakes happening is that there's a time frame because at the end of the day, everybody knows SNL ends up going on. Like somehow the show gets made. So there isn't the stake of does this actually happen and does it get pulled? So for me, there's the element of that's missing is like, what happens if the show didn't actually get made? Like what happens to the whole cast? What happens to Lauren Michaels? Like where, what are they risking within themselves to put this on? And it's never really touched on, um, of like, I don't know. I just feel like the whole cast is just so giddy and happy and just like running around like actors do of just like being all over the place and like running through their scripts, but you're never able to understand like, is one of them, is this their like last chance before they quit? Is one of them like, oh my God, I need this because I'm starving and I haven't had a job in a while and I need this to work. 
uh, I feel like the only real person that we start to have this conversation with is uh, Garrett Morris, played by Lamorne Morris, mm -hmm. where he starts, he just keeps going around everybody on the set being like, what am I doing here? Like, why am I here? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. But it never really gets asked. And so for me, I think that's this overall question of like, why are these people here? And like, what are we making? But the answer never gets said or never found out. Gotcha. And I don't know if that's because they're trying to do something of like, oh, well, they didn't know at the time what it would become, but it became like SNL. But I just wish we saw a little bit more into, I think Lauren Michaels character, honestly, I just wanted to see what was this man going to lose if the executives pulled the show? Yeah. Thoughts, I comments. That. I think, no, because I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll go, because I know you had something too, Mikey, because I do agree with you in terms of like what that whole thing is, is that it just keeps the momentum and pushing the film forward. But it's because it's, it's a necessity that it has to do that. Because again, like you said, the show needs to go on. The thing for me, I do like, I don't know, Lauren, it's sad because he is the reason the show exists mm -hmm. in the first place. And I don't know if it's, what you were saying is like a microcosm of what the movie is as a whole, because it's constantly being asked in the movie of what is this? And that's a big question you could ask Huge. at the end of the movie. Like, what are they doing? And the reality might be that this is what it was. Like they went in, it very easily could be that like Lauren was just like, well, they're giving me a shot. And like, I just have to find talented individuals. And then that's kind of even showcased in a split second at the end of the film when he finds the new writer when he goes into the bar and i think is that brad garrett playing dice andrew dice clay i think I feel so. like it has to yeah, be right yeah, um and they have they have him come in and this writer who's writing all these jokes for if if brad garrett is portraying andrew dice clay who's like one of the biggest stand-ups in the history of the world like what lauren was was he was he's just been somebody that's managed to have an eye for talent mm -hmm. and bringing these people together to make something that feels like everything all at once when SNL is hitting. And it's like that last monologue that he does deliver to, um, to Willem Dafoe when he finally explains what it is, uh, I think is like the perfect way to encapsulate it. And it's why we can get into it and like the, but I thought the second half of the movie is when it starts to build upon itself. Mm. When so much of it is so chaotic in the beginning that you're like, yeah, no, I understand. We're seeing Garrett Morris and we're seeing John Belushi and we're seeing Chevy Chase, but I don't know what movie is here yet. And then we start to dive a little bit deeper into these people. And I think that's what makes it stronger as the movie goes on. But I understand your criticism with it because at the same time, it's like, we already know what the outcome is, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. did you have something? I have a lot of things. Talk to us, Michael. <laughs> I, um, I, I definitely, let me start by saying, I agree. I agree about the um, Lauren Michaels comment um, just because I, I, I wish we, we got a little bit more like I could like that side of like the, what if, this didn't happen like what he was gonna lose i do agree we just kind of like got thrown into like his project yeah like we never really got even like a really like a background yeah like why is it so a mess yeah, yeah what led them to being this chaotic yeah you know and like how did he even get the the green light like you know him and specifically all things like that and so i agree i will say though um maybe this might just be my personal knowledge as far as lauren michaels but i feel like I've always viewed him as like, you can't touch Lauren Michaels. Mm. Like, that's just kind of how I always viewed him. Like, as being like a great for, like you said, Darian, like finding talent. Um, and that he just kind of knows it. And to see him in a vulnerable state like this and just a young state, it, I think for me that it was like watching like, like a young Bruce, Bruce Wayne, if that makes, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's like a weird comparison, but it's like to see someone that's so like kind of like, put on a pedestal in our generation today like back in this sort of state i i, I feel like i still kind of got a lot of that that i wanted to see out of that performance and just out of that character so i i, I agree so, so like kind of with that um i don't know i just feel like i feel like like you said with the statement as far as like the speech that he gave to william defoe in the end that it's like this isn't really supposed to be the creation of saturday night live it's just 
a Saturday night, like he said it. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's your we were watching it. Like that's the grand the scheme is that we're working towards the, the next 90 minutes of getting to the live show. But I think it's supposed to just be like everything that encompasses that. And I feel like it's supposed to just be chaotic because that's also just like I feel like that's production. You know, it's like I I, I feel like it it works without needing all of the answers. Um, and there, there are so many little things that I really want to talk about. I don't know if we want to like space it out. Well, but, I, I want to just go off what you were just saying. Cause mm-hmm. I can, it's like almost like Reitman went Jason Reitman who directs the movie and he co-wrote it with Gil Keenan. It's almost like he wanted to just make a movie while also completely embodying the energy of what Saturday night live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is. Yeah. And I can totally understand the desire to do that mm-hmm. and how it works sometimes in the movie. Cause I agree. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just didn't. It was, and I don't think it's a bad movie at all. Like no. I did, I really did enjoy mm-hmm. a lot of the movie. I had, fun. I laughed the most I've laughed in the movies in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of it might be because of the portrayals, and some of it is actually the jokes that they were telling, mm-hmm. um, and just some of the interactions that some of the people have with each other. Like the cast, these actors portraying these people that obviously had a lot of love for one another, but also so much animosity towards one another, and were constantly like um i'm trying to think of a good way to say this without being vulgar i was gonna say like measuring private parts like that is how it became at least in terms of the (laughs) male actors figuratively and literally literally like literally (laughs) which we get in the milton burl scene but like um no i just think that i think that they do a good job of channeling that energy in the movie like i agree with what you're saying Mm. um but I can also see it's weird because we know Lorne is this different thing. We're all younger. So like we weren't like when this show, I mean, the show debuted in 1975. We weren't even thoughts in our parents' mm-hmm. heads. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's it's hard to see it from that perspective. And I haven't seen too many sketches from the original SNL. I don't know if you have. I know you said you, you haven't watched anything from like the early days of SNL, right? Not really. Yeah. So this is all like new to you. So how did that feel for you? Like with the characters and things like that? So I think people, I I think it's a great film for people that know all these references. I would say I know maybe about 50% of them. Um, And so like 50% of it is a reference or a gimmick to something that I don't have a reference to. And so I don't know if I laughed as much as I thought that I would have, Mm -hmm. Um, which I don't know if that's a good or bad thing because yes, obviously if you're going into a film about SNL, you should probably have more of a backstory, but like then that kind of penalizes this film to only make it for people that are big SNL fans. Uh, So I just don't, I think that's also why maybe this film did really great at the festivals because I think festival viewers are a little bit more um, aware of who the original cast was. Mm -hmm. So now that it's actually making it to theater, I think a lot of this is just going over people's heads of like wire. I don't know. Just there were some scenes that if you don't understand the context or recognize that like, Oh, obviously I could recognize, okay, this is an original scene from the original cast. So that's Mm. why they're recreating it. But there's some casual viewers that are probably like, yeah, I'll watch to learn about the original story. And a lot of this is just reference based, Mm. which I think is why some people aren't loving it as much as you'd expect them to. I think that's fair. That's very fair. Did you have, um, you know, I definitely agree with Dive that. into some I, of those little nuances. Yeah. There's like wanna... one specific moment I could think of that mm-hmm. like hits that on the nail, actually. The whole Andy, when he like stopped the moment when Andy came out. And, and he started, does the Mighty Mouse bit. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if you don't know that, I feel like some people would be like, what the hell is happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you yeah. seen um, the Andy Coffin biopic? Uh... Oh, you also hate Jim Carrey. Yeah. <laughs> what? You hate Jim Carrey? I I, I well, know for that. our audience, now you all know. I don't Liz, hate him. Uh, He's just, like, not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, because they made a whole movie about Andy Kaufman. And that's, Jim Carrey plays him on Man on the Moon. Yeah, movie. I didn't watch it because I don't really but that's a his good acting. Point. <laughs> that's a good point, Michael, because that's definitely... And even that character, which we'll get into because I know you want to talk... Well, so, like, I thought that part was weird of, like, I understand the reference, but, like, the whole... They're all, like, laughing like it's the funniest thing they've ever seen, and I'm like, it's... It's, like, it's okay. Yeah. 
I but I don't know if that's because I don't. I didn't really love Nicholas Braun in this film either. So I think a part of me, I just was like annoyed by all of his portrayals of the two characters that he was doing. And I think it's because a part of his acting for me shows that he's laughing at himself. And that he thinks what he's doing is funny, which I don't really like. If you're going to be funny, be serious in the moment and then let the audience laugh. Don't laugh at yourself. Interesting. I feel differently. I, knew, but I, I knew you would. I think, I, think, I, think, I think differently because I think that like I've, I've seen Man on the Moon and I've seen Andy Kaufman. And I think that he is exactly embodying exactly who Andy Kaufman was, who is literally one of the most controversial comedians of the 70s. Like he was a weird guy, mm -hmm. like a genuinely weird dude who would do these crazy, like out there stunts even to like put his name on the map, like start a real fight on a late night show with a professional wrestler and like get injured. Like, and it became a thing. Like it was, it was, and he was on taxi and all the stuff that came after it, the Jim Henson stuff. Like, again, I don't know how much his character was needed. Again, I didn't see the premiere of Saturday night live. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it. So I don't know if like Henson actually winds up making it on the show. Uh, I did like some of the bits with the Jim Henson stuff when he's talking about putting the Muppets in compromising positions. Like, I think it's funny. I think it, I think it's a really funny thing. Um, and I thought both portrayals were like so different. Like, and but we talked about why he was playing Jim Henson anyway mm -hmm. before we started recording because they had a casting issue with scheduling, and then the, he was just like, "I'll do it." And they were like, "All right, well, he looks entirely different. He's got a giant beard and all that stuff." Um, so I feel differently about Nicholas Braun's performance. Did you like Nicholas Braun's performance? I liked his performance a lot. I, it was funny too, because for a while I like, I knew he was playing Andy. And so then when Jim came up, I kept looking at him like, yo, wait, is, what's going on here? Why does he look so familiar? And then when I put it like together at the end of the movie, it took me literally like the last beat of the movie to be like, wait, that's, that's, that's Braun. Mm -hmm. He's doing too. I personally liked the choice. I, at first, I also question it after the fact. Was well, this the smart move to do? To have him, him play two different characters? Yes. Just because it, it is kind of like, it's like you have like the most natural, everyone's playing somebody, and then it's like an Eddie Murphy type of. Like, yeah, like it know, took me out a little bit. Yeah, like I could see that. I could get, I could get that where it's like, oh, why is this guy two people all of a sudden? But I feel like you, like, you're right. Like I feel like it, they were also very like contrasting. So it's like, it took me a while to be like, is that really him? So mm -hmm. I don't know if he gave that effect, then like, I guess he did a good job. But that. also I have read some things online that people are like, that is so like a tip of the hat to SNL of having somebody doing two different roles in the same scene. Yeah. Yeah. I think Reitman talked about that too. Yeah. About how he was like, okay with it because he's like, at first, I don't know. He's like, I don't know if it was going to work. Like, because why would we cast like him? Like they're both iconic human beings. Like Andy Kaufman is is a legendary comedian and Jim Henson created the Muppets. So people are aware of who these people are. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the way that the movie, I feel like, and this could be a pro and a con. So I'm curious on your guys' thoughts. The moments that worked the best for me was when you were seeing interactions between the cast members and the writers or the cast members with one another. And that's where you start to see a little bit more of them kind of come out. Like you see, um, like there is some, you talked about how like they don't go deep with certain things, but they do put it on the surface. Um, so like the one that they keep kind of showing is um, it's, uh, I hope you bring up, what I, hope. I, I don't know if this is going to be what you're thinking, but it's um, the one cast member. Well, I'm looking at, I'm trying to find which one it is. is it? A the girl that's, that's, that's kind of, uh, I guess must've had a, a one night stand with Ackroyd or something. Oh, Newman? Lorraine Newman, uh, Newman. Emily Farron plays her. So, um, she's noticing that, uh, Dylan O'Brien who plays Dan Ackroyd in this. And I think he does a great job mm -hmm. as Ackroyd and he's going up to all the women saying the exact same thing to sort of get them to flirt with him or just to be funny and to get them to sleep with them. And you're seeing this real vulnerability and real insecurity within her as a performer on SNL and being like, do I belong here? And it's like kind of similar to what you were talking about with what Lamorne does with Garrett, where he's just like, I put on like shows and I'm mm -hmm. like an opera star and like I'm surrounded by a bunch of funny people and we're supposed to be funny. And like, I don't know what my purpose is here. And so I liked those moments and the one too where um, Garrett asks um, uh, Jane Curtin, played by Kim Matula, like, 
what am I doing? When he finally asks, he's like, what am I doing here? And then she goes through the whole monologue of one of the jokes and it like plays really well. And they like laugh about it because it's like, this is embodying what SNL is. Mm -hmm. Those moments work really well for me. The problem is I think that so much of the movie revolves around Lorne. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was a benefit, but it needed to be done because Lorne is the creator of the show. Mm -hmm. And he was the one dealing with the executives. So I'm curious in the character moments, like how you felt about if that was working for you or if it was something where, like you said, it was too referential and you were like, I don't really know if this is working for me in terms of like having human interaction with one another. I really enjoyed those moments. I think that uh, kind of what you're saying is it was a little too split for me of trying to give a lot, half of the film to the cast of the show and trying to show their connection and, and like the embodiment that the real actors are showing of the cast. And then the other half is just uh, Lorne, which I just don't know for me if it worked because then you only got half stories from both sides. Like I was never really able to, like I keep saying, I was never able to see the full depths of both of any of the characters really, or you never got to understand why this is so important that it happens for these people. Um, and so like, I don't know, part of me wishes that maybe they had just focused completely on like, uh, Lauren Michaels story and like the pressure that he feels of also putting this on, which I think they do a great job of showing like the behind the scenes of like how a show gets made. Mm -hmm. I love those types of films. I love those types of shows. And so I really appreciated that, but I wish that they would have shown then the more vulnerable side of him, maybe like, locked in a room by himself freaking out and being like i don't think i'm going to be able to do this mm -hmm. and i don't really know if we ever actually got to that point point. and then also on the other side if you're going to show the point of view of the cast like as an actor you want to be you want to know that the show is going to be one successful but also that like you know what the vision is so i feel like they didn't really show the elements of these actors being insecure or worried that this was going to be bad yeah i agree with everything you're saying like i think it's a really fair criticism the back end of it i'm just so curious because again i don't know too much about the um people the cast members like what came of them when this was happening but part of it, I do really believe, because you were talking about, you're like, there's just like actors running around backstage. That's kind of how I feel like it actually was. Like, I feel like they mm -hmm. were all like, well, we've never had a shot. So like, fuck it. Like, let's just run wild and let's just do what we do best, which is like, be funny. Or like, try to do this. Yeah. Like, I don't know if there was that much thought behind any of the, like the only ones you really see, like Belushi's the only one that comes in who's like a consummate professional. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is amateur hour and this is bullshit. Because I, I don't know if he made Animal House, I think right before SNL. Or like it was like right, it I, came out the same year SNL started. I think it was started. the same year, I want to say. I could be wrong on that. Yeah, though. so he was like already somebody that people like were somewhat aware of in the scene and things like that. And Chevy, obviously they show, or not Chevy. Um, oh yeah, Chevy. Um, they show that he's like always wanting to be more than just a part of an ensemble and he mm -hmm. says it like there's a line in the script he's like i didn't know this was an ensemble is it like he's so self-centered yeah that that's like what it is for him but for everybody else like even with with uh garrett morris like i think that was what he was thinking he was just like what is my purpose of being mm -hmm. here but everybody else i think was just like taking a shot because nobody ever bet on them and it's the same like it's kind of in that monologue that you see with dick ebersall like cooper hoffman's character where he's like He's like, Lauren, they don't want to make this show. Like, they're betting on you to fail. Like, this is actually going to help the mm -hmm. studio justify that we can go and get Johnny because we need Johnny Carson. Yeah. So that was one of my favorite parts, actually. That scene the whole, between the, the, uh, the whole yeah. scene. Yeah. Because I think that's when it finally started to just. And I think that's probably what you're talking about, like the second half. Mm -hmm. It just started making sense of, OK, why is all this happening and why is there such a pressure and why is it so a mess? Mm -hmm. And it's clearly also because they're all very green and they don't have the experience. <laughs> But then also on the other hand, like if they're so green and have like no experience, how are they actually getting the shot? Yeah. And maybe well, I, it's just my like me being naive and not knowing enough about like the, I don't know, first season of SNL. But I just, I, I don't know. I, I just can't believe that it was that hot of a mess 
And yet they were getting like all this, this shot. Yeah. I wonder how much of it was dramatized. It had to have been like pretty dramatized, right? But but some of it was real. Like the character interactions were real. Well, I think it is. But like the lights falling, like the, I just feel like. I'll do some deep diving. Let's do some yeah. deep diving. For us. I know that there's an interview. I don't know if this is real, but who knows what's real anymore on the internet. <laughs> um, I saw there was an interview with Chevy Chase recently, and he kind of gave his opinion on the film, saying that it wasn't that chaotic and that yeah, it was a lot more organized, and that they and Lauren wouldn't have gone alive or done or tried to do anything like that if they weren't at least prepared. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I I could see it being very, you know, dramatic in that sense for sure. Um, but I don't know. I feel like also like it made sense. Uh, it it the fact that they also kept talking about the fact that there were a bunch of twenty year olds. I know. Right. I, I feel like I feel like I don't know. To me, that that's another reason why I like the film so much because to, I forgot how young they were. I don't know how young Lauren actually was. I think it was thirty. Show. Okay, all right. So yeah, I like to like know that they are that young and they're surrounded by all these people too, and like the crew members and like the the union that mm-hmm. are just like we're here for a paycheck, you kids. And like, I don't know. There's something. It's like it reminds me of like the disaster artist. It, it like it has yeah. like that sort of like feel to it, where it's like you can do it sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I think I resonated with this film really well. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the character question though, there was something specific i wanted to bring up just because i feel like again they did such a good job sugar coating certain things that will at some point play a major role in the future um i feel like i could start with chevy since we said this i feel like chevy alone obviously like that portrayal was amazing but obviously we know how modern day chevy chase is he's always been like that but we know it, it, it never got better and i feel like certain interactions in this film you can see, I mean, this is could be maybe projecting completely on Chevy Chase, <laughs> but like, like the scene with um, who uh, who did uh, the writer J.K. Simmons? J.K. Simmons. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Milton Berle is the is the a character that he's playing. Milton Berle. Yeah. Um, like things like that that you trying to just see how like I don't know, like he was like kind of like thrown in like a defeated sort of place that could. I don't know because I, I look at Chevy Chase and I feel like he's like a power sort of guy. I mean, maybe this is my maybe this is my opinion. Let me do a more justified example because that wasn't a good one. Um, in the very beginning of the film, we see um Garrett get handed the coke from mm-hmm. um, um John Baptiste's character. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he kind of keeps it on him, and that's just such a subtle detail that they bring up. And then later, you see Belush do the line. Yeah. Yes, you know, and he and he takes it. I remember I looked it up, and this was something I knew because it was just a little thing that was in there. And I was like, oh, like I wonder if Garrett was like big on coke during time. I just looked it up after the fact. I didn't realize that, first of all, Belush overdose. He, yeah. he, he, yeah. he died from coke. Not only that, but Garrett, there's like a whole, like a bunch of articles talking about how like they did it together and mm. that like he like regrets that, but that was like a big thing. And like he feels like he added to that. So I was reading into that. I was like, oh, snap. And they just kind of like sugarcoated that. Oh, wait, like this played a role at some point. So like little things like that, that I'm like, oh, they didn't have to go into Mm -hmm. it. But they still kind of like laid a ground that like, oh, this was established here and it will probably play a role in it. And so like things like that with the characters, that specific moment with Belush and um, am I saying his last name? (laughs) Yes, Belush. Okay. um, And um. What's it called? And Morris, I I thought was just like a really like oh snap to then go back and see that, and yeah. I wonder how many moments there truly are like that in this film where and it, it might be like having that knowledge of knowing a little bit more to SNL and this world and these characters and these people, but I just I just feel like there's so many little breadcrumbs in there that like you could go back and see that like this it. It captured the moment, but it also showed you how it set the stakes for years to come. Yeah, it's like it's also serves as a tribute to the show. Yes, like exactly. I'm reading, so I'm on IMDb just reading some of the trivia, and again, it's dependent on I guess whoever put it there. Mm-hmm. But like even some of like the male prostitute sketch that they show, um, where the female uh, stars are like kind of um, catcalling um, uh, Ackroyd, like mm-hmm. it says specifically that sketch wasn't formulated until 1979 mm. and the movie takes place in 75 so it's like showcasing this major thing that in Ackroyd's head he didn't feel comfortable doing 
which again, like you talked about, Liz, it's giving a little sprinkle of something that is significant to a person mm. when they were doing something on SNL, but it's not enough to make you be like, oh, there's something deeper there. Yeah. It just makes you be like, oh, maybe that's something. Maybe someone. that's something that I don't know about. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, but I, I agree with what you're saying. I think that part of what, and I, I'm curious, like I would love to interview or talk to Jason Reitman about like what he wanted to do with this movie. Like what was his plan? What did he set out to do? Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that based on what his goal might've been, like you're talking about to give the energy of what that first night felt like and give us those nods to people. I mean, even like getting, getting Matthew Reese to play Carlin, like in showcasing Carlin, who was so controversial and like, obviously very much he very much embodied who carlin was like carlin's like i don't want to deal with anybody other than myself i Mm -hmm. hate the world i hate people like fuck you fuck you fuck you which he does like the whole time so i think he does a good job in that but i think part of what you want to see too liz which makes sense is you want to see them go a little bit deeper it's a little surface level as an overall product as a movie and if you don't understand the references you're just going to look at it as like, oh, they're doing a really good job portraying these people that actually exist. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you know, I don't want to say not like, bad. it's not. And it's definitely entertaining. But there were moments as an audience member where you're like, I think I'm not in on the joke fully, which yeah. sometimes sucks for audience members. I think that's fair. Yeah. It's yeah. Very fair. But I do think the people who love SNL will probably love this. movie. Oh, this is a, if, yeah. if you're a big fan. I mean, this is it for you. I yeah. think people are going to love it if if you get every little detail of it, but if you don't, you'll still be entertained. I just don't think it's going to hit your heart as much as, um, a diehard fan. Yeah. Um, I wonder, I, let me see what it's on rotten tomatoes right now. Um, 85 audience, 81 critics. So still doing really yeah. well. Um, has a 7.4 in IMDb. Um, like I said, it's struggling a little bit at the box office, but maybe it can find its audience. I do think it's worth seeing. And I think again, if you're a fan of Saturday Night live, like you should definitely see the movie because, there's a lot of references to a lot of special moments and important integral moments to what built SNL to be what it is today, which is a phenomenon. Like, mm-hmm. and I think that's also part of what they're trying to give out is like, this is how it started. Yeah. And it's still kind of like this today, but it's obviously different, but it's like, this is really how it all came together. It's just bringing together a bunch of young people. They do say, uh, I think Lauren was 31 when he started um on saturday night live and the thing is like gabriel labelle is literally was 21 when he filmed this and it's like he looks young he also played a young spielberg in the fable mins which is like his big breakout thing um so his two major roles now he's played two iconic sort of figureheads Mm. in entertainment which is really interesting to me how do you guys feel about that that he was like younger playing i don't it's hard because i don't know if he was miscast I just did you like him? Do you think he was a standout or not really? No, not for me. Mm. I thought he was good, but I don't know if someone would have maybe been able to do it better. I don't know. Michael, what do you think? I just because I don't know anybody else that could do it better. And now going back and looking at a young Lauren Michaels, I think he was probably the best choice. Um, and I feel like he, he depicted the, the few times I've seen Lauren Michaels, mm-hmm. like, Th- those mannerisms i feel like he depicted pretty spot on um i don't know anybody else that could have played the character mm. to be honest I yeah agree with you. I, and i don't i don't think it's bad i don't think his performance is bad it's yeah. just like you said it's not a standout to me like yeah. um i mean i i just love everything willem dafoe does and i loved him in this movie and i loved him kind of playing that antagonistic like figurehead of nbc I love the scene in the elevator when he's like so condescending to him and he's like, don't say Dick's like, don't say revolutionary. And he's like, it's going to be revolutionary. And then he's like, I believe he goes, if anybody ever tells you to not do something, say fuck him. <laughs> and it's like, Oh my God, he's setting this dude up for failure so bad. And he's so vindictive. And um, so yeah, like performance wise, a lot stand out to me. And like, for me, there's a lot of like Corey, Michael Smith, who you talked about as um, Chevy chase, like he's been on certain things. He was the Riddler in Gotham and, he was just in another movie. Oh, May, December. Mm-hmm. I thought he stood out in. And he like, I'd love to see, I would love to see a lot of the performers in this movie get more work because of it. Cause I think there's a lot of really great character work in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, I think it's, I think it's a, an entertaining watch. It's worth seeing again. Um, but it's not one that's like overly unbelievable for me this year. Mm-hmm. So was there anything else you had? I know there was a couple things you want to talk about, or do you think, You've gotten it all out. Um, I think I, uh, I think I've gotten it all out. Yeah. 
Okay. You got anything else? No, I don't think so. I did like the ending. How like by the end of it, you're like, oh yeah, they got it done. (laughs) Which like you know they're kind of the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Like when they finally you start helping with the bricks, you're like, Jesus Christ, yeah, fucking time. (laughs) Yeah, the the bricks got a little a little over for me. (laughs) It was was like, you gonna help with the bricks? Gonna help with the bricks? I'm like, all right, we got the bit. Did we ever even get like a real shot of the bricks? Like them using? It was the it was the it was the stage. They just get on the stage and then that's it. Like when they took the photo. Yeah. Again, all right. right. Probably (laughs) highly dramatized in terms of like. But that's see, like that's also like now I'm curious. It's like I wonder what was real and what wasn't real. Yeah. Or like, is are the bricks like a big joke that like, or was that really happening and we just aren't aware of it? Maybe that was real because the bricks still exist. The bricks are still like the front of the stage yeah. for SNL. So it is a fundamental thing. But again, that might have just been another nod. It, it could have just be. been like, yeah, like this is important. You guys know the bricks from <laughs> SNL, right? It's just like, That's I don't what know. what I mean. Yeah, I know. At I get it. At what point is it like, yeah. I get it. It becomes a little too self-referential. But this movie did make me want to go back and watch SNL. It did. Like I want to watch SNL from the beginning now, which is which is cool. Yeah. Um, shout out to most of the performers in this Um Michael and I love you. Nicholas Braun. Liz hates you. No. Um, no. So, no. <laughs> no. Um, but let's do scores. So should I go first? Go hit us with uh, it. I think it's. I think it's. A, I think it's a good movie. It's a very entertaining watch. I do recommend people go and see it. Um, there's a lot of performances that are going to stand out to you guys, and I think the writing is really good. And I'm a fan of Jason Reitman as a filmmaker has a very interesting filmography, <laughs> and some movies I think are really good that he does. Like he's had awards pundits, like Juno was huge, yeah. And Thank You for Smoking, I love that movie. I think it's super underrated. Um, so I like some of the things he does, but other things are just like, Ugh. um, this I think kind of falls in the middle. I think it's like a good movie that he made, um, and he obviously was very passionate about Saturday Night Live, or he wouldn't have made this movie. So. I'm going to go with a 7.5 for Saturday night. That's where I'm at. Michael, you want to go next or you want me to? I can, I can go next. Okay, you go. I'm, I'm going to – you guys are not going to agree. I'm not going to be mad. I'm happy you enjoyed this movie. Thank you. I also <laughs> enjoyed this movie. I just think you really loved it. I did. I did really like this movie, guys. I did. I can admit it. And I'm going to give it a nine. Wow. wow. Okay. One of his favorites of the year okay. so far. Okay. For sure. Yes. All right, Liz, what do you got? Um, I, okay. I feel like I went very negative on this review, but like overall, I don't have a negative opinion about it. I really had a good time. I wanted more from them though. I think that they had a, a big enough platform and a big enough, um, inventory to be able to pull a little bit more of a meaningful ending and a meaningful takeaway. Um, because SNL is in so many people's hearts, they could have had a bigger conversation about art and what it means to make art. And sometimes art doesn't have to be perfect, but you can still make it. And they didn't do that. So (laughs) with that being said, I'm giving it a 7.5 as well, because I did have a good time watching this and I love a good runtime. Well, there you go. That has been our review of the movie Saturday Night, um, co-written and directed by Jason Reitman. A bunch of people, as we said, we've named pretty much the whole cast throughout the review. But go check this movie out if you guys can, especially in your movie theaters. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments. If you guys already saw Saturday Night, what did you guys think of it? If you guys are fans, if we have an older audience or you've gone back and watched Saturday Night Live, let us know what your thoughts were on the portrayals because that's like a big part of what this movie is, obviously, is the performances. So we would love to have a conversation with you guys in the comments about that. You could also give this video a like and subscribe to us. We have the Culture Wave Media Network. We're covering all things film and TV. We also just got approved for the Montclair Film Festival for the second year in a row. So we will have some stuff and some coverage ready for that for you guys, um, as well as Michael's going to be heading to New York Comic Con. So we'll have stuff on that as well coming for you guys in the future. Um, but let us know what you guys think about the movie. And, uh, if you guys can follow us on social media, all that stuff is below me in the video currently. And it's also in the description. So you guys can follow us along there for more content. Just signing off. I am Darian Scalamoni. I am Liz Zako. And I'm Michael Penniston. And we'll see you guys next time. This is the culture.